Robert England here, a.k.a. Freddy Krueger. This is Burning for Springwood. Hello folks and welcome to another episode of Burning for Springwood. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. With me as usual is Suzanne. Greetings! Hey. And also Mike is here. How you doing, sir? Oh, you know, I am happy to be back in Springwood. Never a bad time to burn for Springwood. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Nothing to the report, so we're gonna get right and get get right our hands right into the muck here, and discuss episode thirteen of the first season entitled ah. "Deadline." Peter's a cub reporter with a nose for news. I want to write about life, not death. He lives the big story just the way it happens. This job is killing me. But will the next cliffhanger he reports? The kid's imagination is gonna be the death of him yet. Be his own obituary. Here today. On the next Nightmare on Elm Street, the series Freddy's Nightmare. Uh, Premier January 27, 1989. Your cheapo plot synopsis from Wikipedia is... Wikipedia, Wikipedia, Wikipedia. Uh, a washed-up newspaper editor is given a story of a lifetime, but finds out the paper tells the future and sees an article about him committing suicide. That doesn't sound correct, but whatever. We'll, uh... <laughs> This guy, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they got this all wrong. The guy, the kid is like the son of a newspaper editor who writes obituaries for the paper. And, and basically, he, he's looking for a way out of, of doing this because he keeps writing about death and keeps having premonitions about the way they may have died, which is the first death is fucking hilarious. <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing from all the hands coming from that guy's crotch and shit. But um, yeah, he eventually dies himself. He, he falls off a, a building or down an elevator shaft. I think he fucking falls down. It's not a very good episode, guys. I, I Forgive me. But then his girlfriend starts having weird premonitions. And uh, we'll get into that uh, of, of him coming back from the dead and her friends dying and death all around her. But Mike, tell the wonderful folks who you thought of Deadline. Okay, if I can make sense of this episode, I would love to tell people about it. <laughs> so it, it it was an episode. Um, I'll start with that. I out of all the episodes we've seen so far, we're on currently on number thirteen. <clears throat> I probably restarted this one the most times, just out of utter confusion, just Ooh, what the hell exactly the story was. I usually before I watch them, I'll read the synopsis because. You know, we've established a uh, pattern here where a lot of these episodes like to switch things up halfway. There'll, there'll usually be a a character that was like either the buddy or a girlfriend or a side character that takes over as like the main character in the second half. So I was kind of reading the synopsis to see if that would happen here, but it, the synopsis didn't really specifically lay that kind of scenario out. Instead, I'm not. I'm just totally confused. I'm like almost in awe at how much I'm not understanding exactly what the hell was going on in this episode. Sorry if that's short on detail, but I would love someone to take the mic from me and explain things to me. Gary, what the hell happened in this episode? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, our, our, our person, um, Seen could, could see how his the, the people that he was writing obituaries for have died in weird ways because he the, the beginning of this episode you see a guy in a car driving obviously falling asleep at the wheel and you just see random ladies hands coming up from behind him rubbing his dick and stuff and I, I don't I don't get what's going on there but then he has another one where he's doing a doctor's obituary and this is where you get that great or you get a great scene where. He, his heart is, he, he's a cardiac arrest, so there's a woman in a uh, negligee who's a nurse who literally rips his heart from his chest, all Kalima style, and the heart looks really good. The, 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 it's a pretty cohesive scene, but 
then you get the second half of this episode in which the, 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 the girlfriend of this guy who gives a fuck is all by herself now and she's she's having dreams of, of, of stuff happening to her friends and her friends die and then she keeps seeing visions of her boyfriend who magically grew a ponytail and turned into the uh, Terry Silver from Karate Kid Part 3 for some reason. <laughs> he, look, he looks like that guy now. Um, <laughs> I do remember the Kali Mal Hart part. Yes. He, he he grows a ponytail like magic, though, and I, I, I kind of find uh, the, the mystical ponytail the most fascinating thing about the episode. But um, don't let me talk all this, all this crazy talk. Suzanne, what do you think about the episode? Okay, I watched this twice because I'm like, I maybe I missed something. You know what? I didn't miss anything. This episode is all over the place. I don't know. I, I really don't know how this actually got greenlit as a script. Because none of the parts make sense whatsoever. This is just bad writing. This is bad everything. This is bad production. This is a waste. This is 40 minutes of my life. I'm never getting back. Actually, no, it was 80 minutes because I watched it twice. Because I thought I missed something. It, the, the, you have this guy who's uh, apparently slaving for his father who won't let him do anything and you have all of these mishmashed parts together that make no sense you know the the hands and all of the and his girlfriend who was what uh, she was literally a fart in the wind on the first act of the show <laughs> she was there for like three seconds and the second half is all about her and her dead friends. Oh wait, oh wait, no, it's her friend, friend, dead friends. Yes, they're friend, all dead. Fr- friend yeah. of a friend, they're all dead. Yes. <laughs> this is, I think, so pointless and clueless that the producer, the director, and the writer should all be shot. I mean, I don't want to kill them, but I mean, like a knee shot. They are should gonna, take. Are you going to dream about? Are you going to dream about killing them though? Like, like this girl, this episode. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't want to kill them. I just want them to hurt like I did watching this twice. Uh It's there's no cohesion. There's the entire story meanders from pointless to pointless. It's this is an entire waste of time. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good, but it it does go into the second part because she's obviously traumatized by watching her boyfriend fall to his death. So she's having weird, I guess she, she, she got the weird premonition. Yeah, but she's now. not even the point. It's, it's, it's her I know, friend. I know. I, it it's, doesn't make any sense. This the is end, fucking the, ridiculous. At the end of the episode, made my fucking head hurt like nobody believes. Because he's like, hey, c- come away with me. I got a ponytail and a car. You want to go to Springwood again, girl? And, uh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, hey, her friends, her dead friends are going to come pick her up and take her for a ride. And of course, it should have been her and blah blah bullshit makes no fucking sense. And then the end of this episode, because this is the episode you should, should not watch, she's still sitting at the dinner table at, at, at the dinner table with with the family, with her with her hand in her head, saying, "You know what? Uh, I, I guess I'm just dreaming all this and wasting 43 minutes of the viewer's time." And yeah, but the magical ponytail uh, says it all. You know, the star of this episode is the magical ponytail. By the way, that guy. Uh, the leather jacket and the ponytail is is um quicksilver method. Yes. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah. Oh man, it is it is garbage. I think we yeah. all know our ratings on this one, but I'm gonna kick it to Mike. Is there anything else I can say about the episode? And what is his rating? Uh the best part of this is that we did not have a guest for this episode yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> I I'm thinking they would after watching half of this episode they would refuse to come on and make sure to tell all their friends do not ever do that show because you're gonna have to watch garbage like this <laughs> that's about all I have to add I mean you guys made more sense of it than I did so kudos well, on I, that I tried <laughs> you know I want to maim the writer and the director for subjecting me to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Agreed. So uh, I think we all give it a healthy flaming piss res- resurrection just, uh, just, to, just to get this over with because it's not very good. And uh... Uh, This is, I think, the, the worst thing I've ever seen. I will I mean, say, I don't... I'm sorry, the way they could have done this, the, the way they could have done this better 
is if he could predict the obituaries as they come. I think that would be a much more interesting story than, you know what, I'm just bummed i got to write all these obituaries. Now, if he dreamed them ahead of time as they happened, I think that would be much more interesting. But um, Well, this, this goes back to the, you know, the bride wore red when it should have been the bride saw red. Uh-huh, yeah. This is a complete catastrophe. I don't even know how the hell this got filmed. This yeah. is an abomination of writing. Is that, it's, is, is that no great? Part make, no parts make any sense. This mm. is what seriously destroyed the show for me, even though, well, honestly, you've listened to me. It's just, it's, there's so many levels of terrible. This one is. I really despise this episode so very much because it's incohesive it's stupid none of the parts make sense it's like you know you've got like three sentence acts going on and none of them make sense they just Mm -hmm. literally slap dash this together it's terrible i cannot tell you how awful this episode is yeah usually the lack of cohesiveness is between the first and second halves of the episode. This one is from scene to scene. Like yeah. <laughs> from one scene to another, you're just like, wait, what? And now who he's, she's doing what and who and what the hell is going on? And I'm lost. Why did this transition happen? Why is this happening? This makes no sense. This has nothing to do. The brief story synopsis. I, I don't know who they paid to write that, but they made the episode sound a lot better in two sentences than the 43 minutes actually were. This I think is garbage. I, I think the episode synopsis reading it was what initially made me re like replay it the first time. Cause I, I watched the episode or I attempted to then read the synopsis and I was like, that synopsis sounds like nothing I just saw. Let me go watch it again to see if I was just not paying attention. And I was like, nope, that's just a terrible synopsis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, and I we, watched we, it twice just to make sure that I I was, you know, I might have been tired. I might have missed something. No, I watched it twice. Kill me. We, Kill me now. We didn't even mention you know, all the filler they have in this motherfucker. Like the whole thing where he's having a dream where he's stuck behind bars and forced to write obituaries because he has to meet that deadline. It's so fucking stupid and pretentious. This is like the whole episode. It's garbage. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So we'll get a one that's a little bit better than this one, I guess. I, I, I'll say I'll say it is, I guess. And we'll, we'll decide as we go on. And this one is called da, 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 Black Tickets. Rick and Miranda have just eloped. We'll be free. You know, just the two of us. They're running away from mom and dad. You two disgust me. Breaking your parents' hearts. But will the honeymoon turn into a living hell? I guess they just needed a crash course in growing up. On the next Nightmare on Elm Street, the series Freddy's Nightmares. Which uh, stars Brad Pitt, a very young Brad Pitt. Uh, Hold up, Gary. Hold up, Gary. For that last episode, I almost say we need a brand new fourth rating, like <laughs> de- oh, yeah, death, death by Power Glove or something, because that episode was so damn bad. Our like, <laughs> dr- like dream child bad or something like. No, God. name the writer and the director for this one. I mean, seriously, they need a kneecap taken out for this abomination. We'll, we'll have to think of the worst line in any Nightmare on Elm Street film to make that rating because I, I have to really <laughs> we'll sleep on that to pick that rating for the next one that's that bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think it gets worse than that one. So I really if, don't. If you would like to submit uh, something for us to rate that episode as as like the lowest of the low, you're more than welcome to, to, to message one of us and say what we should call that. So it's a uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, please do. Sorry, yeah. for, uh, sorry for the interruption. That's okay. I'm... Yeah, the next episode though is um, episode one. I mean, episode fourteen of season one. Uh, does Black Tickets uh, premiered February fourth, nineteen eighty nine. I mentioned Star Brad Pitt. Uh, 
uh, Rick and Miranda are teenage lovers who leave Springwood. Their car stalls, so they check into a hotel, but the hotel is run by sadistic hicks. Also, Miranda is <laughs> pregnant, but trying to hold down her job. That's the second part of this episode. <laughs> I mean, yes. any, anytime you have the term sadistic <laughs> hicks in the synopsis, that should automatically make the episode a winner. But. They're, they're not really sadistic. Just some of their stuff in their hotel is faulty. But like piranhas oh, inside on. the hot tub. You know, come on. Yeah, piranhas and harpoons that just randomly go off. Yes. I, I got to say, this episode could almost play as Brad Pitt's character from California, Early Grace, his origin story. Because... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> This is how he starts his murdering ways in this episode. <laughs> oh, man. And his name is Rick, too, which is the exact opposite from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So that's that's fine. And uh, I'm going to kick it, too. Oh. I, think, I think Mike first again. I, I, I forget if we're going to push first last time. But, Mike, what do you think of Black Tickets? I mean, Brad Pitt was cool. It was kind of funny and cool seeing him in a Freddy's Nightmares episode randomly. I I had forgotten that he was ever in this. Um, I think like a year later he did Tales from the Crypt that I remember. It wasn't much after this though. Yeah, it had to be some soon and then he I, was off to the Hollywood races. I, I think it was something involving somebody's father had a, a teenage daughter and he kept stealing her in his hot rod car for some reason. I forget what it is but Brad Pitt was the villain of the episode. Uh, okay. Okay. So this episode, I you know, I thought the first half was a pretty cool, straightforward, like teens, you know, or late teens, I guess, early 20s, like escaping the small town. It almost felt like it was going to be like a road trip episode. And then, you know, um, you have Freddy actually popping up under the car, which is cool. And it kind of just the pace kind of slowed down once. You know, they hit the hotel and kind of became, it felt like kind of became a different episode. The whole pregnancy thing, like, was that really necessary in the episode? It felt like it just added something extra that wasn't necessary. I Um, I really like the end of this episode. We'll talk about it in a little bit, but I think without that pregnancy thing, it wouldn't have worked that way, you know? Yeah, yeah. that part where Brad Pitt's arm or hand or whatever gets like, the ridiculous looking burns or whatever oh, the hell. Funny as hell. Oh god, that was hilarious. I was like, did he just get burners? He turning into Thing from Fast oh. Fantastic Four. He uh, got chewed up by the piranha that were in the hot tub, apparently. Yeah. Um, that apparently inflicts burns instead of bites. Uh huh. Yeah, it was weird. It, like his skin was all bubbled up. Um. But yeah, I thought this episode was was decent enough. I, I did like the synopsis and uh, I just wish the Hicks at the hotel were a little more sadistic. Oh, one of them was Bill Mosley, by the way. I forgot to mention that. One of the, the the hotel Hicks. Oh, was it? Yeah. Damn. Wow. I didn't even recognize him. He was the, he was the tow truck driver. He wasn't the, the guy that owned the hotel. He wasn't the brother. Oh, uh, okay. Right. I'm sorry. Suzanne, what'd you think of black tickets? Okay, I think that this unintentionally uh, did this whole thing on uh, young women getting pregnant and unwanted pregnancies. I don't know if that was on purpose, but that was the whole thing that I pulled out this tangled web of ridiculousness. (laughs) You know, the uh, burn-causing piranhas. I didn't really hate the episode, though. I thought it... Honestly, I, I, it really came off more as a public service message. Hey, young girls, don't get knocked up and get a good job. You get pregnant. Your life is over. So, yeah, it was, it was just kind of odd that that was what came through to me. But, yeah, I, young Brad Pitt acts still. I mean, you could tell he was still kind of getting the feel for acting. It was he was good ish. She was kind of terrible. I love the boss. <laughs> Who's like, oh, no, no, no. You got pregnant. No, you can't. You can't fast climb now. Yeah. You wouldn't knock yourself up. But she couldn't it just came that, off. Couldn't get up that corporate yeah. ladder, you know, after all. Yeah. It just came off more as a public service announcement than an actual episode of something. But that's just my opinion. That's cool. I, I, I love the bonkers of this episode because 
it starts out with these young lovers on this road. Their car breaks down, of course, in the middle of nowhere. And I forgot to mention this this episode in particular. The fog machine budget is out of control. And <laughs> when they're walking up the road, it looks like a like a set out of a western, like a really shitty one. Like I remember Three Amigos when they're in the desert. That's what it looked like to me. I expected them to start singing and like animals to start start coming out or something. And uh, yeah, but the, the beginning the, from from the beginning of the episode, they they looking for a phone booth because their car broke down. Brad Pitt sees a phone booth, starts to cross the street. He gets he gets t boned by this van. Okay. And he, and he limps away. No, no, no. Not even that. Because the very next scene, I was like, oh, by the way, I was like, oh, must have just clipped me. And because he gets he gets destroyed by this van. You get it 20, 20 minutes later before we go into our next segment, which is really stupid because they go into this whole thing where they go into this hotel. And this is where the crazy Bonker stuff comes in because I kind of love it. Where they get, they get the honeymoon suite for free and... There's a crazy p- plaque on the wall of a, of a cherub, and that thing comes to life and shoots Brad Pitt in the leg for no reason. It is. So oh, that was straight. That was so. I swear to God, that scene reminded me so much of just this like ten second clip out of the Legend of Hell House. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just so bonkers. And then the thing with the hot tub. It was fucking. Oh, this is where. That's where we keep the piranha. And he's got to wonder about the girl. Is the girl okay? But then that's a dream. And then she gets stuck in the sauna because this this hotel is fancy, y'all. But it's in the the back row. It has a sauna, a hot tub, and all kinds of crazy stuff. But <laughs> he gets taken away for no good reason. Destroys yeah. the cops. Destroys the cops. He somehow escapes from the exploding cop car. And then all of a sudden, they're back on the scene. Like, hey, look. Look at this van. It doesn't look familiar at all, does it? Because that's the van that T-boned you in the beginning of the episode. But that's the van because they see they see his his dying body or dead body on the ground. And then all of a sudden, next scene, you go to this fucking corporate, you know, building. Well, outside, exterior shop corporate building. And she's back in Springwood, and she got a job at Springwood Records, and the boyfriend made a speedy recovery. And then, like Suzanne said, it goes into this whole teen pregnancy scare. She's afraid she's pregnant. She's afraid she's pregnant. And, like, and she, she, um, she in, her, in her dream, I guess, she is pregnant, and she loses her job. Well, she doesn't lose a job. She, she, in a way, she does. But she wakes up to take the pregnancy test, She's not pregnant. This is where it gets really funny to me. Why I think the pregnancy this pregnancy point is really worth your time. She starts jumping on the bed for no reason and trips on this cuckoo clock. That's a thing in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Falls down, hits her head, and then the end of this episode is her having brain damage and having the brain of a child at this point, where she's lying on the floor in a, in, a, in a sea of toys, holding a baby doll. So w- without the whole baby scare thing. And then her being so afraid to take care of a baby herself uh, on her own because Brad Pitt's, uh, you know, fucking flighty as fuck in this episode. It literally turns her into a child again herself when she hits her head. <laughs> she breaks her crown and becomes a child herself again. <laughs> it's just nuts. I, I like the, I, I like much like in, well, it's not as good as the end of the world episode that we discussed last time. But I do enjoy the bonkersness of this episode. If it wasn't so crazy all over the place, I wouldn't have liked it as much as I did. But um, anybody got a good comment about that? I'm sorry. I was kind of going a mile a minute there. Oh, no. Oh, no. You, you just said it well. Okay. Yeah, you did. Yeah, she literally fell down and broke her crown, and now she's a toddler ever, forever after. Yeah, there you go. And it, I, think it, I think it really works. And, um... I'll kick it back to Mike. Anything else he'd like to say about it? And what would he rate it? Um, I, what do I have to say? No, I mean, I think I said what I needed to say or that I had planned to say. As far as my rating, I'll, it's going to be a middle of the road episode for me. Keep it in the boiler room. Cool. Sue? I second that. Keep it in the boiler room. It, for me, it comes off more like a public service announcement. It's, you know, hey, you young girls getting out of high school, don't get pregnant. You're gonna fuck your life up. 
Well, both of them were kind of, the, the, these, both these episodes are kind of you know, teenage service announcements. You get the whole Heather's vibe, teenage suicide, don't do it. And this one is, uh, don't get knocked up, you'll never get out of Springwood. Dum, 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 you know. No, see what happens when you try to leave Springwood? You get knocked up and you have to go back. You get, yeah. Don't get right. knocked up. Don't have <laughs> sex, girls. It's bad. It's bad you for you. Fuck yourself up. You might turn back into a child yourself, you know. That's a whole other movie, though. That's that's the baby, which is fucking creepy as fuck. But um, now this is straight up Humpty Dumpty. Yes, Humpty Dumpty. So what do you give it, Sue? Uh, no, this is it's not a terrible episode. It's amusing as hell. So I'm gonna I'm, I can't go keep it to prime time, but we're gonna keep it in the boiler boiler room. Cool. I'm right there with you. All three of us agree. Keep it in the boiler room. This is a, this is a nice surprise, and oh. it's a nice bonkers piece of shit that you can turn on and I I I, I enjoy myself watching this and uh but I I'm, I'm we're gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna tell you <laughs> the next episode <laughs> already sounds like a treat because uh it includes the word uh oh I gotta find it now because it's hilarious. <laughs> What's well, called school days and it, it includes the 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 thing in the second half which means we're really in for a treat, okay? <laughs> It's not going to make any fucking sense. But episode 16, Cabin Fever, is directed by Robert Edwin himself, so we might be uh, into some good times there. Oh, that's going to be such a treat. It might be good. It might be good. It could be. It could be. Uh, Robert Robert England? Robert England directs it, yeah. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I mean, we're, we're coming up on a couple episodes not too far ahead that I actually do remember so that's good I watched most of these as they were coming out because I'm fucking old <laughs> we're up to stuff you know you know where to find us guys you're in on the last episode for sure but we all we all have stuff coming up and uh but for now we'll see you all again in the boiler room bye bye now good night kids don't fall asleep sleep